Okay, good morning, guys. This is a session about clear pass. Now, this is a heavy or a little bit heavy course. It's a professional level. So if you decide to do the exam, the exam is going to be, uh, you know, normal exam. You attend the center. I think you can do it remotely from home as well. So it's uh, going to be, it is going to be five-day training. And we're going to look at what is the next solution? What does it really mean to us? And how clear pass can satisfy the requirement for an act solution um, in this case. These are some of my details. You can see them if you need to reach me. That's my WhatsApp number, uh, as well as my mobile number. That's my email, and that's my name, Nafi Salama. And we are running a training uh, that is clear pass essential. It's kind of a combination of two. Uh, think of this one like a boot camp, 20 modules. Okay. We have a clear pass fundamentals, and we have clear pass professional. And that combines three days and three days. They made them five days, basically. So it's kind of a boot camp. Uh, the labs will help us understand and clarify many, many different things. And the key thing, in my view, uh, in these trainings is to do the labs. Uh, and if you have any issues with the labs at any stage, then uh, please, more than happy to help um, in this case. Breaks, lunch, and restrooms. Uh, breaks, we will take nearly one break before lunch. That's roughly speaking 10 slash 15 minutes. Um, they will go for lunch. Then after lunch would be another break, probably. And then uh, most likely going to be uh, the end of the day restrooms. You know where the restroom is. So what are the objectives here? To start with, uh, clear pass is a radius solution. And radius is the core of any network access control, hence NAC. Okay, so the NAC solution is basically implemented or accomplished by ClearPass, which is the product from Aruba. And we will talk about how ClearPass will help us achieve that, how controlled traffic, how can I follow up once the user log in, how the guest solution works, how uh, bring your own device works, uh, how to create multiple uh, or, or achieve redundancy by clustering, and we'll talk about clustering in here. And we look at something called insight reporting, which is basically to do with alerts, uh, follow-up users, uh, report of authentication, failed authentication, the status of the machines in the network, and so on. We will all, uh, that will all be covered uh, in this week. And uh, we will look also how ClearPass can uh, help us troubleshoot issues. And uh, probably you know this, troubleshooting is not one uh, one task. Maybe one task will look at one log and you are good, you get it sorted, done, and, and dusted. It might be the case that, that troubleshooting will require more than just uh, looking at one location. Again, that all depends on the problem uh, and the problem domain. Uh, so we look at these things as we progress in the training. So these are the objectives or these are the expected uh, schedule, basically. Today, we're going to finish up to module five, enforcement roles, and what does it mean? Um, and day two, we'll go and look at the services and we'll focus on guest access. Um, again, these five modules, we might finish more, we might finish less. Uh, again, that all depends on the day, number of issues people will have, uh, issues in the lab, or, you know. So we're hoping that we can finish uh, whatever we see in. in on the schedule, but the bottom line, we will finish the material by the end of the week. That's why it is, yeah. We'll talk about how can I control those who connect to the devices like switch and how can I push the enforcement from ClearPass itself and how can I create definition of roles, i.e. firewall or otherwise on the devices I, um, I connect to. Will let that be a controller base, i.e. wireless? Would it let be a switch? So we will control all of these aspects by clear pass. Then we talk about on guard and on board. On guard, simply speaking, um, is how to do the posture check. And you might use that posture check in, um, in taking action or actions. So you can implement in the logic of the poli policy logic, uh, say, okay, machine healthy, machine not healthy, machine compliant, machine not compliant. So you're gonna use that as one condition, or one of the conditions probably, to take certain actions. On board, again, this is the BYOD stuff. We'll talk about licenses as well. So what licenses you need on this clear pass? What types of clear pass do we have? And so on and so forth. And the last bit we're gonna go is the inside reports. 
Some resources you might be interested in, VRDs, well-known documentation, support portal, asp.rbnetworks.com. This is uh, number one uh, for licenses, for documentation, software update, download, and all that stuff. Our rubber solution exchange and our PDF for partners. This is for partners, afp.rbnetworks.com. And that's one of the very important uh, location we need to make sure that we understand that um, exists for us, yeah. So if we talk about any NAC solution in general, any NAC in the world, live that be Aruba or non-Aruba devices, NAC solution, which is network access control, and this is about um, controlling people access and follow up after that. So it's not simply I need to authenticate and move on, no. It is about controlling people access and then I say, okay, you have been good, but then suddenly there are some anomalies, so I, ca I can't take action, okay? Or you have been infected, you have been fixed, you have been non-compliant initially, you have been allowed, but with limited access, I can promote you or elevate your access because your machine has, conditions have changed. So that's what NAC is all about also. So it's not only authenticating people, but also following up after the authentication. That's number one concept in the NAC solution. But any NAC solution is uh, reliant on radius. So the core of any NAC solution is radius. That's it, simple. So radius is the, the earliest form of control, uh, of access control to any, uh, to any network. So this has been for years, but has evolved from only simply speaking authenticating to more kind of, kind of controlling different aspects of connectivity. Now, if we take this scenario, very simple scenario, I have somebody who would like to connect to a network, and this user is a member of Active Directory, good and nice. Um, I'm a workstation, so I just connect, get authenticated, I'm done. Any policies in terms of like software update, any probably uh, you know restrictions on certain folders, maybe, or certain policies can be pushed from Active Directory, all good and happy. And then the question arises here, why do we need radius? Why do we need this kind of stuff? Because if you take this, radius will be sitting in between these two guys and radius will be the one that will take the response from Active Directory in this example. It might be something different, but I'm just giving you a simple example. And send it back to the client, but you're gonna say, what's the fuss about? Why is this the case? Because radius, as any radius, is able to perform and implement more sophisticated policies that otherwise cannot be implemented in normal authentication. Example, let us say if I need to control how long the user is going to stay in the system, radius can help us. If I need to control how much bandwidth you can consume in, in the next one or two hours or whatever, then radius can help us. If I need to control your location, based on your location, probably assign you to certain VLAN, or based on your maybe which access point you connect to, or based on the time of the day, uh, I might control, let us say, what kind of access rights you have on the system. Radius can help us doing this. Without Radius, we can't really achieve this sophisticated kind of actions that we can take should the user be um, accepted in the system. So Radius is there to help us really achieve a high and more sophisticated policies for the network uh, access. And that's why access network access control helps um, us uh, just achieve that. Now, can Redis by itself achieve everything? The answer is no, really, okay? So we say yes and no. If you need to, sometimes I need to uh, say, for example, uh, the users have failed authentication many times, then I need to inform some sort of help disk. I can integrate this radius with some sort of maybe an API help disk system. Um, maybe the user is jailbroken the device and I need the radius to help me achieve uh, control for that. I might integrate radius with anything like mobile uh, application management, things like Microsoft Intune or something. I might help, it might help me um, integrate with mobile device management or enterprise mobile management. So without that 
NAC or the radius Active Directory, like the authentication source here, is not that sophisticated, if you like. Um, radius can also help us, uh, in this case, the NAC solution can help us uh, with integration with a guest access solution uh, to achieve the guest access and control guest and different aspects of guest uh, communication. Um, I can be able, uh, I'm able, or I can just um, push uh, the concept of BYOD, uh, where the user bring their own device and then they will uh, be able to uh, connect based on the certificate. So the NAC solution is able to, to achieve all of that. Now, um, at the core of that NAC is ClearPass Policy Manager. So if we think of this one, ClearPass system, we're talking about different components here. At the very core is the clear pass policy manager, um, which is the radius component, meaning this is the authentication component of the solution. Around that one comes, if you like, some other features. Guest is a feature. Uh, we're going to look at that, of course, in many details, in great details. BYOD, which is the onboard, is a feature. Um, on guard is another feature. Uh, integrity of third party is another feature, and so on. Um, so you have a lot of these. Uh, if you like supporting applications or features that come with the ClearPass system um, where we can achieve a lot of things. And that's what NAC solution is all about, right? And that's from the perspective um, or from the concept of why we need NAC. Okay. Now, if we look at more uh, technic you know, technical details, how that works. So the user connects to a device. You need to understand this to, for clear pass to make sense, okay? So the user, let us take a simple example. The read, user connects to a standalone access point, and that's an AP, or it can be an instant AP. That user connects to this access point, connects to authenticate the user, and in between them is a clear pass, clear pass policy manager, right? And maybe at the back end, that integrate with a, so a form of a database, let's say an AB. Active Directory. So terms, if we need to define the terms, this is endpoint. So keep that in mind. That is the radius in this case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say backend system, right? And this guy, we call them radius client, or we call them access device. And for short, we call them NAT, network access device. Sometimes we call NAS. NAS more to do with the form of the request, but it can be used interchangeably between NAS and NAND. So let's say this endpoint trying to perform .1x authentication. So there will be some form of EAP request, and then this will take it to the radius as a radius format. Radius might communicate, say, okay, can you authenticate, accept, yes? and the radius will send back a message, radius accept message, okay? So then that this guy will say, okay, thank you very much, you are done. You are accepted, you can send and receive traffic now. For this to work, I need some components to kind of synchronize with each other. Number one, this number one, the NAD device, the NAD device have to, has to be known to the radius. Because think of a NAT device as a parcel force or some form of package delivery. It will take the request on behalf of the endpoint and we'll say, Mr. Radius, please take this. For that to work, I have to identify NAT device, in this case, the access point, on the radius and making sure the radius respects and trusts that NAT device. So that's trust relationship needs to exist. Number two, the client has to be authenticated. The client can use username, password, or, or a combination certificate, okay? So the client will use its certificate or its username and password to authenticate. Okay, nice. But then is that the end story? And the answer is no. We have equally to make sure the radius will have to be authenticated and accepted by the client. And the radius is always using the certificate to say, hey, client, this is my certificate. Can you accept it, please? 
So now we'll, we'll come back to this and talk about it. So the radius will have to be authenticated, let us say accepted by the client. And the client, when they send the request going through the NAD device, the NAD device has to be trusted by the client, by the radius. Now the, the endpoint might not be known to the radius initially, but the NAD device surely has to be known. Does the NAD device send the traffic or on behalf of the endpoint with details? The answer is yes. The radius will have visibility on the details of that client and it will have unique session ID for that client. A combination of MAC address, serial number, or multiple different things. And you can see the details of the client, the MAC address. Once authenticated, pick up an IP, you can see the IP address, MAC address, and many, many more details. Okay? So these three main components should be achievable or should have been achieved before you even attempt or think about authenticating. Okay, now, um, once you have done, you're, you're good with that. Uh, of course, that applies whether that endpoint trying to perform .1x authentication, MAC authentication, guest authentication, all of that still needs to be kind of the same process that, uh, and the difference is the certificate will be two type, different types of certificate. In the case of uh, .1x, that will be radius certificate. And in the, case, in the case of guest, that will be HTTPS certificate. I'll come back to these, definitely talk about them in more details, but you need to understand the general concept of that. Right. Remember requests come in different forms and shapes, which I will get back to that one probably in, in time for when I try to explain more about how, uh, how really the inner working mechanisms uh, of uh, ClearPass and how that goal is achievable. How can, what are the steps we need to follow and perform for that to work? Um, concept wise, we need to just lay the foundation or later on for authentication. So we're going to build the building blocks, basically, in the first one or two or three modules. We're going to build uh, the infrastructure, if you like, for later on, I can authenticate the users. Yeah. OK, guys, we'll come back to this. So let me share my screen first. And then there we go. Do, do we share my screen? Do you see my screen, though? Now you see it. I guess, because I don't see a green. Um, yeah, you see it. OK, thanks. Um, yeah, perfect. OK, guys, so what we're going to cover in this module, um, what are the objectives here? Familiar with the clear pass and the basic functionality. Introduce the use cases for clear pass deployments. Understand how clear pass integrate with other products to form uh, all around security, basically. And uh, where, uh, what is the positioning of the clear pass? Um, there's one very important point to understand uh, in any NAC solution, any NAC, any radius, any radius. In theory, these radius servers, I say any radius, they should not be dependent on a certain vendor. Meaning it's not really a done. We would love to have our radius to be integrated with our devices, definitely. But say you have um, an account or you have a situation or you have a deployment where you mix between Aruba and other vendors. Say you have Jonipa and you have Radius Aruba Clear Pass. Will that work? The answer is yes. You have extreme systems. It doesn't work. Yes. Any other system you have with a Radius, uh, if they are Radius compliant, they understand the IETF formatted radius requests and responses, then you're good to go. Okay. And I'll come back to more, some more details about this. So network control and team force protect. And this is where our uh, radius is sitting here. Uh, clear pass, unified access, guest BYOD, IoT, non AAA access. Remember one thing about NAC also, there's something really important to understand. I don't have to authenticate to be controlled. So this is there are many cases where machines or endpoints they cannot really authenticate because they don't they, we call them headless machines, for example, where well, the machines can only perform simple form of authentication, extremely simple like Mac authentication, uh, or machine can't really authenticate at all. We still can control them. 
ClearPass will glean any information it finds from any device it has visibility to. So the second I see the switch, I integrate it with me, and the switch will send me information about its neighbors. Maybe it's time, it's TCP IP table. Um, I can see these requests. Or any Mac that is listed on the switch communicated to me, I'm able to glean that and control the devices. So it's very sophisticated. And we'll talk about a few concepts here. What is guest profiler on board UnGuard? And then we'll talk about remote access in this case. I will reshare that with you guys again. Um, so agile access, so you control the access. It doesn't really matter who, how, when, and what. Uh, I'm should, I should be able to control the access. I should be able to satisfy the requirements for access control. Um, I should be able to identify the context. Now, this, this is something really also another uh, dimension of any NAC or su successful NAC authentication or NAC control is um, Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, that's wrong link. Yeah, sorry. The, the link was wrong. Yeah. I'll get you another link for that. Yeah, bear with me a second. I thought, yeah, that, that looked strange to me. <laughs> um, that's why I have another user. Yeah, I think that's the one. Can you double check? Um, bear with me. Share this. Thanks for letting me know, Greg, for that. Okay, can you try this and let me know? Yeah. So coming back to this, the, the connection itself has context. So the context means the details of that connection. Example, the time, location maybe, the user itself. What type of machine, that's a context of connection. So I can identify or uniquely identify a certain connection from its context. And not only that, I can take decision or sophisticated decision based on the context of that connectivity. I can enforce my policies at the very beginning. And remember, we have the concept now floating around edge to cloud control from the very connectivity point up to the end. I'm able to control and apply the same policy. I can. I need to protect. I have a lot of control on um, what can be done here. We talk about conditions that I am able to incorporate in my logic, which is we call the enforcement policy. Um, I can control what kind of action I can take based on one or multiple conditions. So we're going to look at that also. And uh, we talk about the integration with other systems. Let that be internal systems, i.e. Um, within clear pass itself or within our products or even externally with third party ecosystems, I can integrate with firewall, one acceleration systems, backend, multiple kind of devices. Um, I can still integrate with them, yeah. Because I can do a good job in something, others can do a better job than me. Like if I have a Chromebook connected to me, I can control, but I can't wipe that machine, for example. I can integrate with the mobile device management for that machine system. And then I ask them, say, please, because this device has been compromised, can you please, or can, has been stolen or lost, can you please wipe out that device? So I can send instructions, if you like, in the in sense. I see a message here. Yeah, thanks, Greg, for letting me know, because I was a bit surprised about the share. Yeah, thank you. Right, um, use cases for ClearPass. Obviously, what we show you is, is one of the uh, multiple use cases. Unified access, no matter where you connected, how and when you connected, location or the method or, or the authentication type, I'm able to control you as well as you have reachability to my system. Guest access is one of the big part of ClearPass, to be quite honest. And we're going to talk about the guest access, the certificate that you get involved in it. And that's where the tricky part of the guest access. But we're going to control that as well. We're going to look at that. Uh, BYOD, as we mentioned before is when you bring your own device and that needs a license for that. Uh, non AAA authentication. So I can control those devices who connect to my system that they are not or they're not required to authenticate. And then I am able, because they can be the, the weakest point of entry. So a lot of hack and, um, you know, entry or unsolicited um, traffic comes from these devices. If have, they have been hijacked, then I should be able to control that. ClearPass itself is a, is a complete kind of a set of systems, as I said to you before. 
At the core of that system, we have this guy who is clear pass policy manager. And let me remind my friends here, this is our radius, okay? And keep that in mind all the time, all the time. When you configure anything, web pages for the guest login, when you do BYOD stuff, you must make sure clear pass policy manager, which is the radius, has some form of policy that will authenticate um, that user who comes from wherever. Okay, so that is what clear pass radius, clear pass policy manager. Clear pass guest is another component that doesn't require any special requirements, it's always there and uh, doesn't require any special license, it's part of the access license. Endpoint profiler. Profiling means what? It means I need to know what that machine is, right? So I part of the profiling, I do fingerprinting. Fingerprinting, probably, I look at things like, you know, what does the DHCB request look like? What does it look like? That's the sequence of requests and option 55 and multiple different things. What HTTP agent is telling me about that machine? So all of these, I can look at OUI, for example, of the MAC address and so on. All of these are mechanisms to profile. I can take these profiling capabilities and based on the type of the machine, I might take action. So profiling is really important in multiple cases. When I connect as .1x authentication, I don't know that machine context maybe initially, I will accept the, 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 the user with limited access. I profile, I might then promote them by sending them COA message, which is a change of authorization. And then I can uh, control these guys uh, and put them in a proper VLAN or elevated profile. On board the BYOD, that requires a special license for that's called onboard license. On guard is basically when you do the health check, all of these on board, on guard are all components that are optional components. Inside reporting, which is basically a visibility inside the authentication and the alerts that has ha that have been generated. You can create a policy, you can create your own alert definitions if you like, which we will come and produce uh, reports at the end uh, related to the clear pass authentication. And a clear pass complete solution is what we see. That's a landing page basically, which is customizable. You can change that landing page. Clear pass policy manager, guest insight, and then on board. Obviously, from within clear pass policy manager, you have links to all of these, right? There are three different ways to access multiple different things, right? Additional resources, as we said to you before, support central, uh, head community, and our solution exchange. So that's the end of the explanation of module number one. I will be stopping the recording right now.